again, everybody, and welcome to the first ever here to Utah Valley University, the first ever Pepsi Great West Conference Basketball Championship Tournament. We're here. Utah Valley's women's basketball team has snuck into the championship game that's going to be held here at the UVU Event Center this afternoon. We welcome you into the broadcast. They will be taking on the number one seeded North Dakota Fighting Sioux. The Sioux were a very tough team. They've won 11 games in a row. Utah Valley had kind of a down year this year. They were 7-22 overall in the regular season. They won both games here. Uh, so far in the conference tournament, as the sixth seed, Utah Valley's been able to upset the three seed Chicago State and the two seed Texas Pan American Bronx to sneak into the title game. And today, Matt, they're going to try to take down the one seed in North Dakota. Definitely. I think you talk about how both teams playing their best basketball right now at the end of the season when it's most important. The Wolverines, as you said, an improbable run here into the conference championship as well as uh, North Dakota playing very, very well all year long. No surprise that they're here. It's going to be a great team, a great game between two teams with wonderful momentum. And no, it's not the men's basketball team that's here in the championship game. They lost their first round game to Texas Pan American back this past Wednesday, but it's Coach Nixon's women's uh, team that's made it to the title game. So we're excited to see what happens, see if they continue this upset trend and try to win their fifth game in a row to try to win the first ever Pepsi Great West Conference Basketball Championship. And we're going to move on to the keys to the game here for Utah Valley. Definitely. Some of the important keys uh, for the Wolverines in this game is that they're going to need to get points off of turnovers. They're going to be looking to create turnovers and get points off of those turnovers. They've shot the ball well in the tournament from the three-point line. They're going to have to continue to do that as well as rebounding. They're going to need a total team effort on the rebound again. As far as uh, North Dakota is concerned, they're going to look to get off to a very fast start. They're going to look to get points in the paint because those are the easiest points that you can get. And they're also going to be looking to put a lot of ball pressure on the Wolverines so that they can turn the Wolverines into getting some steals and turnovers as well as far as they're concerned. So along with those keys to the games, James, we, we also talk about key matchups. And those are the players that we think are going to have an important impact on this game. For UVU, it's obviously going to be Julie Smith, the senior in her last game ever as a Wolverine. Look for her to play very well, as well as Asumi Nakayama. She's the one who runs the point and the offense for the Wolverines. Those players are going to have to play a great game if the Wolverines are going to come out as a victor. As far as North Dakota goes, Jossie Bergen is also the point guard. She runs the show uh, for the Sioux as well. Kayla Bogason is going to play a very important role as well. She leads the team in scoring at nearly 14 points per game. So Wolverines are going to have to come up with a defensive plan for both of those players if they're going to come out victor this afternoon. Yeah, definitely. We're excited to bring this game to you. James Warnick with Matt Peterson. And we're going to step aside, take a break, and be back with the starting lineups and the tip here on UVU TV. As a healthcare leader, I rely on Utah Valley University graduates to help our company provide quality health care for the region. Many of the nurses graduating from UVU go on to work in our hospitals and clinics. They are superbly trained and are excellent employees who tend to stay in the area and remain employed with us for years. This is just one example of how UVU is serving the economic development needs of the region and the state. Stop by the campus to see for yourself. Utah Valley University, it's your university. Well, welcome back here to the UVU Event Center for the, the first ever Pepsi Great West Conference Women's Basketball Championship game. It's the Utah Valley Wolverines playing on their home floor, Matt. They've snuck in to the title game facing the North Dakota Fighting Sioux, the one seed versus the six seed. Utah Valley, an interesting note. They're actually the visitors playing on their home court as they're the six seed. So up on the scoreboard, they will be the visitors and they're in their visiting uniforms for Utah Valley. Julie Smith, Asumi Nakayama, Jenna Johnson, Erica Newbold, and Blake Reynolds, the starting five for North Dakota. Joss, Jossie Bergen, Whitney Ledger, Mallory Youngblood, Corey Loft, and Kayla Bogason. We're set, here's the tip. Utah Valley fights for it, but the Sioux have it, and we're underway with the first ever Pepsi Great West Conference Championship game. We're excited to have you with us. Up top with it. The Sioux swing it around the horn to Bergen. Bergen, a very talented point guard for the Sioux. She hands it off 
Now on the near side, it's Loft with it. They drop it down low to Ledger, and she's called for a traveling violation. And the Wolverine faithful loves it here in Orem, Utah. James, one of our keys to the game we talked so much about was uh, which team is going to be able to force the other team into turnovers. Great defensive possession there on the opening possession for the Wolverines causing a turnover. Let's see if they can get points off of this. So Utah Valley looking to strike first. Good save in the corner by Johnson. They back it out front. Julie Smith at the leading point scorer for Utah Valley, the senior. Looking down low, knocking out, it's stolen away and taken by the suit. Out of front, Youngblood, she'll stop till a three-pointer, put it up, bounce around the rim and go home. Lucky bounce there for North Dakota. They lead 3-0. Nice shot there. Uh, we talked about how well the Wolverines had shot the three. North Dakota in their game yesterday did a nice job of 30 the three as well. Back-to-back -back turnovers on Utah Valley. Here comes North Dakota. That's Bogason putting up a wild shot. Won't go. She gets her own rebound, passes it out, and Youngblood has it. Out front, they swing it around the hard board. Bergen, deep three, air ball. Ledger saves it, but it goes out of bounds. So Utah Valley catches a break there as North Dakota throws up a couple bad-looking shots, and the Wolverines will have it. You know, one thing I've noticed early on in this game, being only playing a minute and a half in, is that North Dakota is playing a zone. I don't know if the Wolverines have uh, seen this much of a zone in this tournament so far, but it looks like North Dakota has, has done a very good job so far of stifling the Wolverine offense. Wolverines get it to Julie Smith. Baseline jumper no good, and the rebound pulled down by North Dakota. Here comes Jossie Bergen, the point guard, running the floor. Looking for a cutter, can't find anyone. Guarded there by Asumi Nakayama, the senior for Utah Valley. Into the near side. Now out front, three-pointer by Youngblood up. Too strong. Rebound pulled down by North Dakota as Corey Loft has it. Goes up and under, puts it up and in. Beautiful move by Corey Loft. It's 5 nothing North Dakota. Nakayama, who's played so well in this Great West Conference tournament for Utah Valley as the Wolverines have snuck into the title game. They're the sixth seed, next to last in conference play. Only 3-9 and nine conference record on the year. 9-22 and 22 overall. They're in the title game. Up front, Julie Smith, three-pointer short. Newbold pulls down the offensive rebound back out to Nakayama. She'll put up a three-pointer, won't go. And Youngblood gets the rebound for North Dakota. Youngblood running the floor ahead of Utah Valley and puts the layup up to up and in coast to coast. Where's the defense there, Matt? As North Dakota scores and they lead 7-0. Great question. Another one of the keys of the game was that North Dakota was going to look to get out fast and have a fast start, and they've done exactly that so far. Six shots, made three of them, but they are, they have shot three three-point shots already, made one of those. So they are definitely being the aggressor so far in this game. As far as the offense goes for the Wolverines, if North Dakota is going to be playing that zone, the Wolverines need to look to attack the gaps in the zone. There's going to be spaces where penetration is going to be, uh, be had. So the Wolverines have got to do a better job, and, and that comes from whichever players are on the perimeter, whether it's Asumi, any one of the guards are going to have to look to drive to get into the paint. That just breaks down that zone that, that zone uh, defense that North Dakota has. The Wolverines have not scored a bucket yet. 0-3 oh, oh from the field, two turnovers. We, the Wolverines, if they're going to be in this game, cannot turn the basketball over, and they, they have not done that so far. They've not taken care of the basketball. So as this game progresses, we'll see which Utah Valley team shows up here today. Is it the one? They had the rough season in the early going, or the one as of late that's won four games in a row and won both games in the Great West Tournament to sneak into the title game. Knocking on with the basketball, backs it to Jenna Johnson. Johnson's a good shooter, the sophomore from Salem, Utah. Backs it to Julie Smith, she'll drive. She's quadruple team, tries to put it up, and it's a jump ball called. Smith driving in traffic there. It'll stay Utah Valley possession. They'll inbound baseline with eight on the shot clock. That's exactly what I was talking about, James, as we'll see here. We'll see that Julie was so aggressive in just breaking down the zone. It's what you have to do. You have to drive to the middle and get into the paint. Smith to Casey Mansell. They just checked in. Mansell forces up, but the shot clock is going to expire. Short shot, no good. A rebound knocked out of bounds by North Dakota, and Utah Valley keeps it. Casey Mansfield in, the freshman from American Fork, Utah, number 25. Smith's inbound. Up front to Newbull. Now they hand it to the point guard, Nakayama. Nakayama will set the offense now. 
Comes to the near side. And now pass it off to Johnson up front to Mansfield. Mansfield had a big game yesterday in the semifinal win over Texas Pan American. 11 points, 14 rebounds. A double-double. Hands it to Nakayama. She'll drive. Pass it off to Newbold. Newbold back to Smith. Three-pointer off the rim. Won't go. Rebound tipped out. Nakayama has it. She'll look for the shot. Can't find it. Back to Smith. She'll take the three-pointer. Off the rim again. And the rebound pulled down by North Dakota. A couple good looks there, wouldn't fall. Great shots from the Wolverines. They've gotten wonderful shots. 0 of 6, they just can't make one of those shots, but you can't complain about their shot selection. But Augustin off the mark, and we've got a tie-up as Ledger and Smith, a couple of number threes fighting for the basketball. It stays fighting Sioux basketball as they hold the possession now. So they'll inbound from the baseline, and even 16 minutes to play here in the first half. Sioux up 7-0. Into Loft, she'll back it to Bergen. They swing it around the horn to Bogason. Now to Youngblood. Youngblood looking to score. She's guarded heavily by Smith there. Back to Loft. Loft, Youngblood thinks about the three. Now she'll pass it to Loft. She'll shuffle it off. Layup up and in by Ledger. Beautiful job there by Loft to Ledger. Is the Sioux up nine? Nothing. Wonderful offensive possession there from the Sioux. They had a number of shots that they could have taken earlier in the shot clock, but did not do so. Did a great job of taking care of the ball and got the, sh the best shot that they could have in that situation, a layup. 15-25 to go. Shot by Johnson. Well short. Mansfield, Johnny on the spot, puts it up and in. Good offensive rebound put back. The Wolverines are on the scoreboard. They trail 9-2. Bergen to Bogason. Bogason is the Great West player, Great West Conference Player of the Year. Hands it to Youngblood. She hits another triple. Youngblood, three of four shooting, has eight points as North Dakota's leading by 10 already, 12 to two. You know, she came off a strong game yesterday as well. 15 points, 10 rebounds for her. So she's been playing very well. Once again, James, just the Wolverines are struggling against this zone. See if they can get some momentum and go into the rim. Smith called for the walking violation. She travels with it in, in the lane. And we've got ourselves to the first media timeout. So we'll see what Coach Nixon talks to Utah Valley about during this timeout as they trail 12 to 2 with 1447 to play here in the first half. We'll be back in a minute on UVU TV. Dr. John is a real UVU professor, not an actor. So to tell his story, we hired a UVU student. Knowledge-based edification increases executive functioning in the frontal lobes. Yo, dude, UVU is more than an education. It's a life experience. Exposure to enhanced pedagogical approaches promotes neural activity in the limbic system. For sick education, get here and strap in. UVU facilitates the discovery of your personal Weltanschauung. What? Dude, you don't know everything yet. Utah Valley University. It's your university. Weltanschauung! Well, welcome back here to the Pepsi Great West Conference Championship title game here in women's basketball. Utah Valley playing on their home floor here at Utah Valley University. They trail 12 to 2. They're the sixth seed taking on the one seed, the North Dakota Fighting Sioux. And so far early in this game, it's been all North Dakota as they lead by 10. So far, it's been Mallory Youngblood leading the way for the Fighting Sioux. She has eight points on three of four shooting. And Matt just... As you said, Utah Valley is very cold from the floor right now as they are only shooting 20% from the field. Yeah, you know, they're, they're really struggling as we see some of the season stats that are up there. Wolverines have done an, a pretty good job of shooting the basketball, but their problem in this game, James, is that they're one for eight as we get an offensive foul called here. I believe a moving screen on number one, Jossie Bergen. But the Wolverines, back to what their, what their problem has been, three turnovers and one of eight from the field, 0 of four from the three-point line. I think a lot of teams think when they play against the zone that what they need to do is shoot threes, and it's just the opposite. You, you can attack the rim even more, but once you, you can't complain about the shots they've been getting. They've been great shots. Nakayama drains the three-pointer, getting a great shot there, and she hits it this time. Utah Valley trails 12-5 now. So maybe the timeout helps the Wolverines. Bogason to Bergen for North Dakota. She drives the lane, dishes it to the corner. Now they back it around to Bogason. She'll put up a baseline jumper blocked, but a foul called. Oh 
The referee put up the wrong number. She's calling the foul on Kayla Boggison. That's the shooter. Should be three, should be on Julie Smith. She corrects it right there. So Boggison's at the line, shooting two. Boggison, the first free throw up and good. She's the leading scorer on the season for North Dakota. As we look at that replay right now, and Smith did get the arm there as they call the foul. Augustin is also selected as the Great West Conference Player of the Year this season as well. She makes both free throws. The Sioux lead now 14 to five with 14.05 to go here in the first half of the championship game of the first ever Pepsi Great West Conference basketball tournament held here in Orem, Utah. Jenna Johnson controls for the Wolverines, hands it up high to Nakayama. She passes to Smith in the corner. Smith back to Johnson. Shot clock already down to 10. Good feed down low to Reynolds. She puts the layup up and in. Nakayama finds Reynolds for the easy dupes. Once again, James, that's how you do it. You've got to get into the middle of the paint. Asumi is a great passer from just about any spot on the court, but especially when she gets into the paint, she, she can create a number of different opportunities as she does with a nice pass off to Blake Reynolds there for the layup. Young left to Elise C.A. that's checked in for the first time. She's off with the shot, and Reynolds pulls down the rebound on the backside, and here comes Nakayama. Asumi to Johnson, wide open three-pointer. Oh, it hits the side of the backboard. Must not have been set there. And here comes North Dakota, quickly down court. Layup up and scored as Jossie Bergen, one of the players we said to watch out for in this game. She scores the layup, two up 16-7. You know, when you have one of your guards take a corner three-point shot, if the defense can get the rebound, it's a great time to push it in transition because that guard is stuck in the corner. They have a long way to go to get back on defense, and that's exactly what happened there as, as Bergen took the ball all the way to the rim. Back out to Julie Smith. Julie had a big game yesterday. She puts the layup up and in as she threads through the defense. Just like talking about her big game yesterday, she continues to hit with her first basket. Utah Valley draws 16-9. Jossie Bergen goes to the left side, puts the shot up. Oh, counted if it goes, won't go. Bergen creates the contact, and she'll head to the line of shooting two as Casey Mansfield picks up her first personal foul. You know, I think we'll see the replay here. Hopefully we'll get to see that. There was a great screen that was set by uh, number number 14, Youngblood. She set a great screen, and it looks like North Dakota tries to do a lot of that. A lot of on-ball screens on the perimeter to spring their guards or their quicker players to get them some momentum in going to the, to the basket. And uh, Bergen is a very, very aggressive player, and the North Dakota offense seems to try and do that a lot. They try, seem to do a lot of weaving, a lot of driving, on-ball screens, motion-based, movement-based offense, which obviously works for them as of because of the season that they have had. Got a quick timeout. I think they might have set a blood timeout. Yes, they did. Uh, let's see who is that. Number three, Ledger, has uh, got some blood on her leg off of a cut. So Ledger's over to the bench for North Dakota as the officials stop it for a moment. There'll be another free throw to come for Jossie Bergen. But Utah Valley. They'll have to come back for this eight-point deficit as they trail with 12 and a half minutes to go here in the first half. This is exactly what happened to them in the semifinal matchup yesterday when they took on the two-seed, the Texas Pan American Bronx. Wolverines trailed by 10 at the half, and they looked kind of off their game, had a lot of turnovers, 17 to be exact, in the first half. But in the second half, they just took control of the game and dominated that game as they shot 68% from the floor as the free throws made by Bergen. So we'll see what Utah Valley can do in this one as they trail 18-9. to nine. They've been doubled up early. Nakayama comes to the left side. Trying to find someone down low. She can't do it to Johnson. Three-pointer off the rim. No good. Rebound tipped around and pulled down by North Dakota. To Bergen, and here she comes for North Dakota. Screen up high. Bergen comes to the right side. Now hands it to CA. CA down low below the basket. Bounce pass on the far side to Loft. Now back to Bergen. Shot clock down to 4 13. Loft down in the lane. She'll hand it to Young, but fakes the three. Back to Loft. Deep two from the baseline. It is a good looking shot there as Corey Loft hits at 29, North Dakota. North Dakota runs a great offense. They're looking to do a lot of driving and kicking with that movement and motion that we just talked about. They're a very unselfish team. They don't take a selfish shot. Reynolds left open, takes the free throw line, jumper won't go. A little flat, and here comes North Dakota one more time. The Sioux looking very good early as they've won 11 consecutive games in a row. 
Ledger, wild pass there. She tried to find Loft, but Loft started to cut right when she threw it. So it's a turnover on North Dakota. It'll be Utah Valley basketball. When we get back, we've got a media timeout with 11 minutes, 20 seconds to go here in the first half. It's North Dakota 20, Utah Valley 9. We'll be back here on UVU TV. We meet here once a week. Get We meet here once a week. It's a chance to discuss mostly. I've always been like super concerned about saving money, right? Mm -hmm. But like I really wanted like a good education too. I guess I really got green fever when like I found out how Utah Valley University can get me both. We have our regulars and of course there are always our new ones every time. I'm Steve. Hi, Hi Steve. Steve. This is my first week here. Uh, uh, I'm really excited. Uh, this whole green fever thing's kind of just started for me. So. More and more people want to know about green fever. Welcome back here to the Pepsi Great West Conference Basketball Championship Tournament here in Orem, Utah. It's the North Dakota Fighting Sioux, the one seed in the women's basketball tournament, leading the sixth seeded Utah Valley Wolverines 20 to nine. So far, Utah Valley's had a tough time shooting the basketball, four of 14 from the field for 28.6%, while North Dakota seven of 12 for 58.3%. Wolverines with the ball, looking to score the basketball. Smith takes the deep two from the top of the key, won't go. Rebound tipped around, Mansfield has it, puts it up, won't go. Out of bounds, stays Utah Valley basketball. You know, I want to make one comment, James, about those stats that you just mentioned. You know, Wolverines now with 16 shots. Seven of those have been threes, and they've only made one of those seven. So I think if, if you're the Wolverines, you want to try and get some shots closer to the rim, just like a Julie shot there. There's no problem with putting somebody on the high post and getting shots there. Nakayama puts up a three-pointer. This one won't go, but Johnson runs down the long rebound. Nakayama to Smith, another three-pointer. This one short as well. But Nakayama comes away with the pack with another rebound. So multiple possessions in this one possession for the Wolverines. We'll see if they can finally convert, it, convert a bucket. Smith down low to Newville, blocked but a foul. Gonna go on Mallory Youngblood. So finally they'll have some free throws coming here for Erica Newville. You know, that was great offense right there because what the Wolverines did is they put Julie at the high post. We'll see here. And she just makes a nice, simple entry, pla uh, entry pass into, into Erica. Erica definitely has a, some size where she can create space for herself in the lane. So I would look for the Wolverines to do that a little bit more, to, to put Julie or to put a playmaker on the free throw line and just allow her to make plays from there. And, uh, and she can make nice entry passes like she did there to, to Erica as well. Newball, the 65% free throw shooter on the season, makes both. She has that very high arcing shot, but it looked good that time. Utah Valley down 20 to 11. Bogason with the basketball for the Sioux to Youngblood. Three pointer on the way off the mark. And Nakayama gets another board for the Wolverines out and running the floor. Quickly ahead to Johnson. Johnson stopped there defensively and a turnover. She throws it right to Whitney Ledger on the wrong team. Bergen back the other way. Bergen in the lane, backs it to Youngblood. Open three-pointer, nothing but that is Mallory Youngblood. Very hot, she's in double figures early with 11. I think it should be concerning for the Wolverine coaches as to how open North Dakota is getting on their three-point shots. They've been diligent in setting a lot of screens to get their players open. See, once again, James, there's that offense. I mean, I think that's great. Put Julie at the high post and let her create something. She's got to be aware, as she, she was there, that if she's going to be at the high post and she gets the basketball, she's going to have players collapsing on her. But uh, with the Wolverines shooting only one of nine from the three-point line, uh, a, a, a big difference from where they have been shooting in the tournament, I think they need to, to take, uh, take more uh, pressure off of themselves and shoot less threes. Freshman Kyra Prousey for Utah Valley checks in. Mansfield, good pass to it down low. Misses the layup. Had a good look in the lane. Couldn't connect. 
And it's knocked out of bounds off of Newbold, I believe, so it'll be North Dakota basketball. You know, it'd be an interesting stat to see how many shots the Wolverines have gotten in the paint of their 19 and how many they have not made. Obviously only four of 19, but they're getting a lot of shots close at the rim, which is a great thing. Augustin guarded heavily by Prousey, hands it back. Now to Bogason, Bogason to Loft, Loft looking to drive the lane, puts the layup up and in, fancy move by Loft, she scores the bucket, it's 25-11 North Dakota. Utah Valley, oh good feed down low to Mansfield, knocked down to Mansfield, Mansfield can't connect down low again and here comes North Dakota. Nicole Smart that's just checked in, got a foul call, does knock down and hits the deck. And it's going to go on Whitney Ledger. Watch, well, assuming I think she gets uh, gets tangled up there with uh, with Ledger. I'm not so sure if that was a foul. Looked like uh, Ledger was kind of in good position there. Almost looks like uh, that could have been a play on there. But a great break for the Wolverines. One that one that they need. They need to come up with some points here. Mansfield to Smith. Open baseline. Look. Off the rim won't go, and the rebound pulled down by Loft for the soup. Off hands it to Smart. Smart ahead there to Youngla. Youngla, a very hot hand early. Shaking and baking with the dribble. Down low to Ledger. Ledger inside, move, puts it up and in as she knocks Smith to the seat of her pants. And Coach Nixon calls a timeout for Utah Valley as Julie Smith has a couple words to say with the official. You know, James, we had talked about beforehand uh, the, the game that the Wolverines played yesterday against Texas Pan America. In the first half, they shot 8 of 24 for 33%. In the second half, they were 15 of 22 for an uh, overall game average percentage of 23 of 46. As opposed to this half, they're 4 of 21. 19%, 1 of 9 from the three-point line. A mere 11%, 2 of 2 from the free-throw line. Let's hope that in the second half, as, as that gets uh, gets closer, that they'll be able to, to turn around their shooting. But that has definitely been the Achilles' heel so far in this game for the Wolverines is their poor shooting, as opposed to North Dakota. 10 of 16 from the field, 3 of 7 from the 3, 4 of 4 from the free throw line. So kind of polar opposites there as far as, far as, uh, as offense goes. Uh, 12 points in the paint for North Dakota as opposed to 6 for the Wolverines. So North Dakota's looked very good early. Julie Smith back to live action, drives the lane, stutter step move, off the backboard, won't go. And there's a big rebound by Ledger for North Dakota. Ledger ahead to Smart. Smart will control for the Sioux. To Youngblood, she loves that corner over there. Doesn't take the shot this time. Back to Loft. Loft drives the middle, Nakayama reaches in, can't get the ball, back to, they swing it to the corner. On the low block, now down low to Bogason. Good feed as Ledger sees Bogason cutting to the basket. It's 29-11, Sue. You know, there's that movement and motion that we talk again. It's really incredible watching North Dakota and how much they move on offense and how well they move. They're cutting, they're moving, they're doing everything possible. You see a wonderful layup there. Once again, a great pass from Asumi to, uh, to Mansfield. But on the defensive end here, James, is where the Wolverines are going to win this game. They've got to do a better job of keeping North Dakota from driving to the basket. Ledger on the baseline, drives baseline, tries to get it to pass off, but it's stolen and taken by Julie Smith, and then a foul on Whitney Ledger out of frustration as she rips her headband off. She's not happy. She gets called for the frustration foul. So maybe Utah Valley can get a little momentum back as they trail 29-13. We'll take the time out here on the floor with 7.41 to play in the first ever Pepsi Great West Conference Basketball Championship Tournament. I never used to care about college sports. I mean, I go to a game or two, but it's mainly for social reasons, you know? But now things are different. And how has green fever affected your school spirit? Are you kidding me? I never miss a sporting event, home or away. You got NCAA baseball, softball, basketball, cross country, golf, track and field, wrestling, soccer, volleyball. I'm keeping stats. I'm memorizing stats. I'm memorizing numbers. I'm dreaming about numbers. I'm dreaming about Wolverines. I just bought a pet Wolverine. It tore my dad's favorite chair. It was wicked awesome. And how does that make you feel? Oh, yeah, I guess it's, it's pretty cool. 
Me? No, I, I don't play sports. I wouldn't want to make the athletes envious. I don't mess around, man. Well, welcome back here to the UVU Event Center. North Dakota leads big over Utah Valley in the first half of the championship game. 29-13. The Wolverines trying to make some shots. They've been very cold from the field, shooting only 21.7%, while the Fighting Sioux on the flip side are shooting very hot, 64.7%. You know, 11 field goals for the Fighting Sioux, seven of them have been assisted. So that shows you that they're, they're a great passing team and they're looking to get their teammates the ball in ideal situations. Johnson, strong move to the bucket. She scores two as Utah Valley trails by 14. What the Wolverines want to do here is cut that deficit to a manageable deficit for the second half. Pass off the hands of Augustin. A turnover on the Fighting Sioux. The Wolverines will have it. A nice lucky break there for the Wolverines is just a mishandle on the pass, but you know those are the types of plays that have to go your your way in these games, especially when you're trying to build some momentum as the Wolverines are at the end of the first half here. Smith finds Newbold at the free throw line, back to Nakayama. The Wolverines have a shot clock down to 14, seven minutes to play in the first half. Nakayama trying to find Mansfield, she keeps control of the basketball, off to Smith. Smith drives baseline. I believe she stepped out of bounds before she put the shot up, and she did. She stepped on the baseline. You know, that's going to be the fifth turn turnover for the Wolverines, but I like that offensive possession. They got a little bit of everything. They got some drives to the, to the, to the basket, passing around the perimeter. They got the ball into Erica. She made a nice pass out. It's good, uh, a good sign there for the Wolverines. The fighting Sue swinging around the horn. Bergen back controlling the point guard duties to CA, the sixth man of the of the year award winner in the Great West Conference. Nakayama steals it, but she's out of bounds. Good hustle play there by Asumi, and she's playing very hard, but the Sioux will keep it. You know, one of the first things that you're taught in, uh, in basketball as a young age is you have to keep your eyes on the ball. Asumi did a great job of uh, proving that point right there as she was very aware that the ball was coming to her side and she was able to step in front of the pass there. Unfortunate break that she uh, she ended up out of bounds. Youngblood drives baseline, puts a tough shot up, won't go over the rim, no good. And here comes Nakayama. Nakayama, bad pass. As Smith tries to save it, but she saves it right to Jossie Bergen, and here she comes. Bergen to Smart, back to Bergen. Sue try to look inside. Bergen will drive on Nakayama. Nakayama reaches in, and they call a tie-up. Good hustle again by Asumi. As it's a jump ball, Utah Valley will get the basketball right back. You know, that's now uh, six turnovers for both teams as we see Sumi, a great job of not trailing the play there. She did a great job of staying in front of Bergen and did an, a, an even better job of getting her hands on the basketball, causing the tie-up. Right on top of the basketball, as you can see there in that replay. Knocking him with the ball. Good pass down low to Smith. Oh, she misses the layup. Good look. Smith tries to tie her up. It was smart to just check back in. They call the reach-in foul on Julie Smith. Another one of those baskets that are at the rim that the Wolverines just cannot seem to, to find go in the basket. You know, just a great play, a great setup there by Asumi, a great pass. Those are the, the baskets you need to finish. It looks like the Wolverines are a little bit intimidated when they're taking those inside shots. They need to go up strong. Smith with two fouls here in the first half. Has to check out as Krause checks back in for a traveling violation call. Okay, Lebogason doesn't like the call, but that's what it was. Utah Valley will get the ball back. New ball team out of the backcourt. Carly Rothfuse is in the game. Six foot freshman from Minnesota on the floor for North Dakota for the first time here this afternoon. Knocking with the right handed dribble, comes to the left side, splits the lane, puts it off the glass, misses another layup. Rebound tapped out and Krause saves it for the Wolverines to Johnson. Johnson thinks about the three ball, doesn't take it, she'll back it out. Now to Nakayama. The Wolverines have a new shot clock. They've had a lot of good looks. They just cannot connect. Nakayama pass back to Mansfield. 15 on the shot. Cross court to Johnson. She drives, pushes it up, and they call an offensive foul on Jenna Johnson. Charging foul there. So Johnson picks up the foul. Her first. And the crowd here in Orem doesn't like it. You know, as we see the replay here, great, uh, great job of those gap dribbles, that gap penetration. I think uh, Jenna went up there for the for the, uh, the the basket. Obviously, I thought that could have been called a block because the South Dakota, uh, excuse me, 
North Dakota player was not set at the time, and another turnover for North Dakota, making it nine now on the game for them. So North Dakota, they're trying to keep the Wolverines in this game as they've had a number of turnovers, just as he said, nine, Matt. So oh, here come the Wolverines. Prousey with the basketball. 4.55 to go in the first half. Good pass to Johnson. She puts it up and in. Count it. And she's fouled. So Jenna Johnson gets one of those layups to go in, and she'll be looking to complete the three-point play here. Big time for that one for the Wolverines. I think sometimes teams go into a zone, as we'll see, a, you know, a great back cut there from Jenna, great awareness uh, from uh, Kyra Prousey. Beautiful pass as well, great finish. When teams go into a zone, sometimes they do it if they get into foul trouble, thinking that, you know what, we'll go into a zone, maybe we're less likely to foul. I think North Dakota has done a great job of not fouling. This being on the make there from Jenna Johnson, only the third free throw that the Wolverines shot in nearly 16 minutes of play. So a three-point play puts the Wolverines down 11, 4.45 to go in this first half. Bergen with the basketball, knocking out, comes out to Garter. Off the Bogason, back to Bergen. The Sioux handed in the corner to Corey Loft, guarded there by Newell. Trying to find Youngblood down low, threw her hands out of hands, and Utah Valley will get the ball right back. Another North Dakota turnover. You know, I, I mentioned a little bit earlier that the way that the Wolverines are going to get back into this game is on the defensive end, and they've done, done just that. They've done a great job in the last four or five minutes here of playing tough defense. Johnson, three-pointer short. And there's North Dakota with the, with the rebound and the ball. Bergen to Youngblood to Bogason. Three-pointer on the way. Around the rim won't go. And the rebound pulled down by Prousey for Utah Valley. Quickly ahead to Nakayama. Nakayama comes to the near side. Prousey three-pointer. Oh, she hits it. Big shot for Prousey off the bench. The Wolverines only down eight now with four minutes to play in the first half. Smart to Youngblood. You can feel the momentum in the building starting to shift towards Utah Valley. Bergen in the corner. Smart will tow the three-point line. No good and Nakayama, the shortest player on the floor. Skies high for the board. Nakayama to Prassi. Oh, thought about taking the threes. She just made one moments ago. Doesn't take it. Nakayama calls out what she wants her offense to do. Good feed down low. Newball tries to corral it, and they call a jump ball. She dives to the four. Possession arrow does go to the Fighting Sioux, though, so it'll be the Fighting Sioux basketball when we get back. But Utah Valley starting to look a little better here as they only trail by eight with 3.28 to play. We'll step aside and bring in the rest of the first half in a minute here on UVU TV. I'm Destiny, and I'm a dancer. I don't practice until I get it right. I practice till I can't get it wrong. Hi, I'm Devin, and I'm a rock climber. And I never stop reaching for the top. I'm Kyle. I play the guitar. I love playing the guitar because it's tough, but I don't do drugs. And I don't drink alcohol. I don't have to. 87% of Utah County teens don't use tobacco, alcohol, and other drugs. 70% of them never even tried. So play hard, play clean, live a drug-free life. 3.28 to play in this one. The inaugural Pepsi Great West Conference Basketball Championship game held here at Utah Valley University. It's the Wolverines, the sixth seed, down by eight as they travel the one seed at Fighting Sioux, the University of North Dakota, as the Sioux lead 29-21. But Utah Valley starting to get the momentum in this game and trying to trail by a very manageable deficit before the half as there's 3.25 to go in this one. Jossie Bergen, honorable mention, Great West Conference, all to, conference team member with the basketball, swinging around the horn, back to Bergen. Bergen picked up defensively by Prousey as she comes out on her. Smart with the basketball, shot clock to 15 to Bergen. NBA three-pointer, lets it fly and she hits it. Jossie Bergen, good looking touch there. That's well beyond the flash three-point line here at the UVU Event Center. 
Here's, here's a baseline jumper scored back by Jenna Johnson as Johnson strokes that one. And here comes Bergen back quickly the other way. Wolverines down nine. Tobogason. Smart looks down low to Youngblood. She'll back up to Bergen. Bergen feeling it right now. Youngblood loses control of the between the leg dribble. It goes right into the Wolverine bench. And Utah Valley will take advantage here with another fighting Sioux turnover. I think the defense of the Wolverines, in particular the guards, have kind of turned the course of this game a little bit, forcing North Dakota in some, into some uh, uncharacteristic turnovers, giving the Wolverines extra possessions. They've taken nine more shots in this game than, uh, than North Dakota has. Perhaps these three-pointers stuffed by Bogason, but it's knocked out of bounds. They say it will stay Utah Valley basketball, and it's off of Bogason. You know, James, I think, too, uh, the, the Wolverines can utilize uh, ball fakes, shot fakes, pass fakes against this zone. That's something that they need to do, uh, particularly there as, as Kyra got her shot blocked. She can pump fake that and get an even better shot. Shot clock winding down to five. Newbold in the post tries to give it to Prousey to Johnson. Oh, he hits the 15-foot jump shot from the baseline. Jenna Johnson puts the Wolverines down 32-25 now with just over two minutes to go in the first half. Youngblood, she loves that spot there on the near side of the floor with the basketball. Good defense by Prousey, but they call a foul as I say that. Gonna call a reach on Kyra Prousey. Prousey playing well off the bench here as she's replacing some tough shoes to fill. Julie Smith on the bench with two fouls here in the first half. You know, kind of an isolation play there. Uh, Kyra Prousey, I'm sure, felt like she was out on an island there knowing that it was going to be her against uh, the North Dakota player there. Just who's gonna, who's gonna make the better play? Prousey gets caught for the fouls. Asumi comes up with a steal. Inbounds pass taken by Asumi Nakayama. The Wolverines have it. She'll hesitate, drive the lane, and make the play. Beautiful stutter step move by Nakayama. And Utah Valley only trails five with 1.40 to play in the first half. Looks just about like yesterday's game, the semifinal game against Texas Pan American as the Wolverines won by 16 in the end. Nicole Smart pass poked away by Nakayama, but saved in the backcourt by Bergen. No backcourt violation as it was tipped by Utah Valley. They call an offensive foul. What was the call there? I believe they got a timeout. Oh, oh a timeout time call. Before the play was made there. Timeout call by head coach Gene Roebuck from the bench as he is not pleased with his team right now. Roebuck in his 23rd season at the helm at North Dakota going Talking to his troops, he's taking on Coach Nixon of Utah Valley in her 15th season with the Wolverines. So both coaches very well seasoned with their respective clubs. Yeah, obviously at North Dakota, a very well coached team as well as Utah Valley with Coach Nixon. Both of these teams, you can see they're, what they're trying to run offensively, what they're trying to do uh, defensively. Both teams seem very, very disciplined and you can attribute that, their style of play, how they approach the game to the mentality of their coaches as well. 124 to go in the opening half of the Great West Conference Championship game. This is the women's championship later tonight. Matt, you're doing a little double duty. You'll be back here on the color with Steve Watts doing the men's championship game. It's, it's the one seed South Dakota taking on the two seed Houston Baptist Huskies in that one that'll start at 7.30 tonight. Yeah, I think that'll be a very good game as well just like this one is shaping up to be. James, nine seconds on the shot clock. Key for the Wolverines to realize that and to not bail North Dakota out with a foul on a shot. They've got to play tough, solid D. Young to Bergen, D three-pointer short, and the Wolverines have the board. Pretty good-sized crowd here at the UVU Event Center cheering on Utah Valley. Wolverines in the road jerseys. They're the 60. They're technically the road team playing in their home Arena, knocking in with the basketball, drives, puts it up off the glass, won't go, rebound, ricochets around off of North Dakota. It'll stay Utah Valley basketball. Utah Valley getting very good looks at the rim here. Just, they're starting to make more than they were, but still having a tough time converting some of them. Especially from Asumi, she has an uncanny ability to get into the middle of the paint and almost disappear, uh, defenders lose track of her. Assuming he will put up a three-pointer off the rim, no good. Newbold pulls down the offensive rebound, and the Wolverines keep it. New shot clock, 50 seconds to go here in the first half. Wolverines trailing by five. Prousey with it, looking for Newbold on the low block. She finds Johnson on the baseline. Johnson will back it to Prousey. 15 still on the shot clock. 
Nakayama is swinging around Krause. She'll put a three-pointer up. Won't go. Rebound tipped out. Johnson has it. Puts it up. No good. Rebound to Lop. And North Dakota comes away with it with the shot clock off. 25 seconds left here in the first half. So lots of good looks there. The Wolverines just couldn't get it. North Dakota trying to take advantage now as they'll hold for the last shot with 12 seconds on the clock. Bergen knockout comes out to face Garter. Open look for Smart. She'll put up a three-pointer and drain it. Nicole Smart off the bench. One second, Nakayama, good if it goes, won't go. As Asumi almost put in the beyond half-court shot at the buzzer. But a good first half for Utah Valley. Too bad they gave up that three-pointer right before the break. It's right now we go to the half. It's 35-27, North Dakota. Yeah, they definitely fought their way back into that game, and they did so because of their defense and also because of their, they, they shot the ball a little bit better. Incredible stat here, James. 11 of 37 field goals for the Wolverines, 13 of 23 for North Dakota. Wolverines out shooting, uh, out shot attempting, I should say, uh, the fighting Sioux by 14 shots, yet they still are down. Eight points here at the half. The leading scorer for South or for North Dakota is Mallory Youngblood with 11 points. For Utah Valley, it's Jenna Johnson has nine. We're going to step aside, send you to break at the half. It's North Dakota 35, Utah Valley 27. And we'll send it to the studio here on UVU TV. Well, the Great West Conference was initially formed as, as a football conference made up of uh, Division I AA institutions, ranging anywhere from St. Mary's of California down to Cal Poly, UC Davis, Southern Utah, North Dakota State, and South Dakota State. Those are schools that were independent schools. The leagues that they were in for their all sports programs did not have football. So several athletic directors came to uh, the, the Mid-Continent Conference office, which I was located in uh, several years ago. and and we really talked about how we can come together, put together a scheduling package for these schools, and give the student athletes an opportunity to, to play for championships. So after about, uh, probably about six months of discussions and policy making, uh, we actually formed the, the Great West Football Conference, as it was called back then, back in February of 2004. Uh, from that point forward, uh, we played football for four years before a group of athletic directors of, of the uh, independent institutions at the Division I level uh, asked us to put together perhaps uh, some policies and procedures and, and some scheduling ideas for a group of independents that wanted to get together and, and begin an all sports conference. The Great West Conference offers all the student athletes at these institutions the opportunity to play for championships for postseason play. Uh, when you talk to the coaches at these institutions, one of the things that, that other schools talk about negatively about their institutions is they can't go to postseason play. Well, the, the Great West offers that opportunity. Uh, for instance, the basketball championship here in Orem, uh, March 10th through the 13th, uh, the winner of the men's basketball championship will go on to the collegeinsider.com tournament, which is a postseason tournament that, that's several years old, and, and they'll have an opportunity to play against other teams that had very successful seasons. When the basketball championship is done, obviously that's our premier event in, in the conference. You know, we still have several championships in the spring for the student athletes to compete in. Uh, we'll have our golf championship, which is at the end of April, and that'll be down at University of Texas Pan American as the host. And then we'll have our track and field championship, which, which will be held at a wonderful facility uh, outside of Vermilion, South Dakota, in Yankton. They have a, a, a high school there that built a track a particular, just, just for track and field. Usually you see tracks around football fields or or something like that, but this is just a track only facility and it's a wonderful place. I've, I've visited that and, and I think the student athletes will love that experience. At the same time, we'll have our, our softball championship, which will be held down in Dallas and uh, hosted by uh, Houston Baptist University. And then we'll have our baseball championship, which will be another, I think, a crown jewel of our, of our conference. Division I athletics is, is, is something special. I think uh, in order to, to compete at the Division I level, you have to have talent. 
You have to have drive, determination, but you also have to, have to be a good student. And you know, being in the Great West Conference is no different than being in the Mountain West or the Big Sky or Conference USA. It's all Division I athletics. And if you're a very good player, uh, you're a good person, good student, and you graduate, you're going to be seen by these, by these pro teams. Uh, for instance, we'll, we'll have uh, NBA scouts at our basketball tournament. Uh, we'll have uh, Major League Baseball scouts at our baseball tournament. Uh, for instance, Ronnie Price here at UVU. I mean, what a great player he was for this university. He probably could have gone other places, but you know what? He fell in love with UVU, stayed here, played, played great basketball, and now look at him with the Utah Jazz. And you know, hopefully he can win an NBA championship, and which will bring some more notoriety to, to UVU. I think every school in our league has that opportunity to, to develop. Uh, they have the coaches in place. They have the uh, strength coaches in place to get these student athletes ready to be seen. But if not, if they don't go on uh, to pro athletics, I mean, they have a great degree to fall back on. Uh, student athletes tend to, to, uh, to get into doors that perhaps the, a common Joe can't get into. Welcome back here at the UVU Event Center at the half. It's North Dakota leading 35-27. Right now you see the halftime stats. As they've got those up right now, three-point percent shooting. It's just giving us a tournament sponsor. So right now we'll go over a few sponsors to read to you. Utah Community Credit Union, Goldsmith Jewelers in Provo, Orem City, we want to thank all of our great tournament sponsors that are helping bring this inaugural Pepsi Great West Conference basketball tournament possible to you here on UVU TV. We want to thank the Orem County Commissioner's Office, the University Mall here in Orem, Papaya and Company, the Utah Valley Convention and Visitors Bureau, Brent Brown Automotive Group, Murdoch Hyundai of Linden, Kengar Ford American Fork, Rocky Mountain Power, the Hampton Inn in Orem, La Quinta Inn in Orem, Best Western Cotton Tree Inn in Provo, Best Western Timpanogos Inn in Lehigh, La Quinta Inn in Provo, Marriott Courtyard Hotel in Provo, Spring Hill Suites of Provo, and the Provo Marriott Hotel helping bring this tournament possible to us here today. Definitely, we're very grateful for those uh, those sponsors, those showing interest in uh, in Utah Valley University, and obviously in the Great West Conference. We're very appreciative and thankful for them. You know, James, maybe we could go. Uh, it'd be a great time to go over some of the stats here uh, at halftime. Obviously, we have the the score: North Dakota Fighting Sioux 35, Utah Valley 27. Start with the uh, the home. Well, I guess the not the home team, the visiting team in tonight's game. The Wolverines, 11 of 37 from the field so far for basically 30%. Two of 14 from the three-point line, 14%. Only shot three free throws and made all three attempts. Uh, they're led in scoring uh, Jenna Johnson with nine points. I have on, uh, in, our, in our stats here, James, every Wolverine player that played in that first half scored a basket, which is a great sign. You know, it's a great sign. All, all the Wolverines are able to get in there and contribute. Uh, 20 total rebounds for the Wolverines, 13 offensive. That's a great stat. 
uh, Coach Hunsaker, the men's team here at uh, Utah Valley, used to always talk about how the best offense against the zone are offensive rebounds. And they, the Wolverines have proven that with those 13 offensive rebounds. Seven assists, eight turnovers, no blocks, and four steals for the Wolverines. So they've done a great job of taking care of the basketball here in the first half. As far as the Fighting Sioux from North Dakota are concerned, they've done a, a great job shooting. 13 of 23 from the field, 56.5%, 5 of 12 from the, th uh, from the three for 42%, and 4 of 4 from the free throw line, obviously 100%. Three, only three offensive rebounds for, uh, for North Dakota. One of the things that we talked about as, as a key to the game coming in was that the Wolverines were going to have to do a good job of rebounding, and they have definitely done that having only given up three offensive rebounds. Um, okay, uh, nine assists, 12 turnovers for uh, North Dakota, uh, two blocks and three steals for the Fighting Sioux, led in scoring by Mallory Youngblood. So we're going to step aside, send it for a commercial break here at the half. It's North Dakota 35, Utah Valley 27. We'll be back here in a minute on UVU TV. Valley University. Your life, your beat, your university. Welcome on back as the Wolverines take the floor here. A little warm-up shooting to get ready for the second half. They're trailing by eight at the break. We've got a minute. We wanted to talk to you about the all-conference team here in the Great West Conference women's basketball. We told you that Caleb Augustin for North Dakota, is the, she was named the Player of the Year. These awards were handed out by Commissioner Ed Drum and the tournament started earlier this week. Caleb Augustin's a Player of the Year for North Dakota. The Newcomer of the Year is Bianca Torrey from Texas Pan American. She gave Utah Valley a tough test yesterday. She scored 21 points. Torrey's a very good player. The Defensive Player of the Year, Rose Esther Jean for Texas Pan American. The Sixth Woman uh, Player of the Year is Elise C.A. for North Dakota. And the coach of the year is the Fighting Sioux's Gene Roebuck as well. For Utah Valley, Julie Smith was named to the all-conference second team. And Utah Valley also had two players named honorable mention all-conference team as Erica Newbold and Jenna Johnson were named those for the Wolverines. Jenna Johnson is the leading scorer in this game, the sophomore from Salem, Utah, is Utah Valley's leading scorer with nine points. For North Dakota, it's Mallory Youngblood. As Youngblood's a member of the first team all-conference, and she's the leading scorer for North Dakota here today with 11. Let me go over just a couple more stats here with you, James. Uh, both uh, North Dakota and Utah Valley have 14 points in the paint, but I think that the Wolverines have gotten far more shots in the paint than North Dakota has. So maybe in the second half there, they can get those to fall. Nine points off of turnovers for North Dakota, 14 for UVU. Uh, six second chance points for UVU as opposed to only four for North Dakota. Another interesting set, zero fast break points in this game. Neither team has been able to get out and, and get a, a basket in transition. Seven points off of the bench, bench for the Wolverines, three from uh, the Fighting Sioux. Well, we'll send you to a quick commercial break and be back here for the second half as North Dakota leads at half, 35-27 here on UVU TV.
just about ready for the second half here at the UVU Event Center of the Pepsi Great West Conference Women's Basketball Championship game. Utah Valley, the sixth seed, taking on the one seed, the North Dakota Fighting Sioux. The Sioux hold an eight-point lead here as we're going to start the second half for North Dakota. On the floor right now, Bergen, Bogason, Ledger, Youngblood, and Loft for Utah Valley. Nakayama, Johnson, Smith, Reynolds, and Newbold. So both teams starting fives out on the floor right now. It'll be Wolverine basketball as we get underway here in the second half. You know, I wanted to ask you, James, you were here for that game yesterday where the Wolverines seemed to really turn it on and, and change the course of the game in the second half. What was it that you saw yesterday in that game that did it for the Wolverines? It was definitely the biggest thing I saw was Julie Smith. She just took control of the game. In the opening round games, Julie had an off night. She only finished with seven points. And in yesterday's semifinal game, she just caught fire in the second half and scored, finished with 20 points for Utah Valley's top point score. The Wolverines had five players in double figures yesterday as well. The Wolverines let the basketball down low. They work it to Newbold, and she's fouled from the backside quickly by Corey Loft. So a good start for Utah Valley. They draw the quick foul on the fighting soon. The Wolverines will inbound baseline here one more time. Wolverines have run that play a number of times, just that, that high-low action, whether it's either Julie or, or Blake in that case, passing it down to Erica, who did a great job of posting. They'll keep running that play, and I'm sure they'll keep having success. Blake Reynolds left open. She'll take the jump and hit it. Big shot by Reynolds. Her first basket of the, or actually her second basket of the volume. She has four points. Wolverines down six. See what the defense had to do there because of the last play when Blake, Blake passed it in. The defense had to sag off of Blake thinking that they're going to try and get it in. And Blake had a wide open shot. Got an offensive foul called down low on Whitney Ledger. I believe that's going to be Ledger's third foul. And it is just as we start the second half. So she's got to be careful here with the three fouls. Jenna Johnson with the basketball. Utah Valley only down six here. Just underway in the second half. Johnson, three point, and a good look. Off the rim, rebound, five four, tipped around. Knocked out by Johnson, knocking on the hands it to Smith. Open look, three point, a good if it goes. Let's see if they count it. They're gonna talk it over. They call the foul down low, but I believe the shot was up in the air. Man, I think they should count this shot. Yeah, this is gonna be really close. Counting, they say. It's a big three-pointer made by Smith in the corner. They call the foul away from the basketball. So the bucket counts. You know, hopefully we'll be able to get a replay there. I know we won't be able to hear as to when the whistle was blown. The foul was called on they Ledger, called it on, correct? Yeah, on so Ledger. it should be the Wolverines basketball. It should not be... It should not be uh, North Dakota's ball, and, and Ledger has, now has four personal fouls. If we can get that run back up there, if we could see a, a, a replay of there uh, before the shot, we'll see exactly what happened because our attention was drawn off to Julie. And as far as, uh, uh, as I'm aware, James, that, that rule, as we'll see here, see the ball being reversed. Uh, there's the, the play before with Jenna Johnson taking that shot. If we keep this running, I think it'll... It'll show what happened here. We get the ball coming out to Asumi. And it's where she drives here where she gets fouled. Okay, it looks like Ledger went right up there. It, it's very close. It's hard for us to tell. Thanks for the replay, guys. Great work. It's hard for us to, to hear when that whistle was blown. But as far as, as I'm aware, the shot has to be in the air when the whistle is blown for the bas basket to count. Is that how you understand? That's how I understand that yeah. rule. So, they obviously ruled there that the shot was in the air when the, uh, when the whistle was blown, so they did count the basket, and the Wolverines get the ball back. It was, it was definitely very close, as I was trying to decide myself if, if the shot was in the air before the whistle or not. But they count the bucket, big three-pointer made. Wolverines only down three, and they have the basketball. Johnson behind the arc to Nakayama, trying to look down low. They swing it to Smith. Smith just made that big three-pointer moment to go to Reynolds. Now to Nakayama, shot clock to 16. Cross court to Smith, another three-pointer. This time from the other side won't go. And a backside rebound by Corey Loft and the fighting Sue Hammond. Jossie Bergen will bring it into the front, front court. Trying to put North Dakota on the scoreboard here in the second half, but it's a turnover as Whitney Ledger couldn't corral it. It goes out of bounds. Interesting note, Matt. 
Oh, they take her out right now. I was going to say they're leaving Whitney Ledger rolling the dice with four fouls. But just as I say that, Gene Roebuck takes her out. Definitely. Uh, another great point. 14 turnovers now for the uh, for the Fighting Sioux. Only eight opposed to the Wolverines. They've done a great job of forcing those turnovers. And so far, they've done a pretty decent job of capitalizing on the, the mistakes of the Sioux as well. Utah Valley only down three. Reynolds in the middle to, to Johnson. She drives, has it stripped away, and they call a jump ball. Good reach in there by Bogason. She comes away, grabbing her arm. But it's North Dakota basketball on the possession arrow. Freshman Casey Mansfield checks in and replaces senior Blake Reynolds for the Wolverines. Another thing that's been so amazing to me is that the Wolverines uh, have held North Dakota to only 23 shots, 13 of 23. A lot of that has to do with those turnovers. Nicole Smart just checked in. She scores the first bucket for North Dakota. A big three-pointer for the Sioux. They're up now 6, 38-32. Sorry to interrupt you there, Matt. The Wolverines get it down, though, on... Looking in the block, they get it to Newball, tipped around. Smith has it, and she saves it out to Johnson. To Nakayama, she'll put up a three-pointer off the mark. Air ball, let's see who that's out of bounds off. And off from North Dakota, so Utah Valley catches a break as they'll keep possession. Yeah, nice job there of Erica Newball at the very last second, swiping at the ball, hitting it off of uh, Bogason's uh, head or arm, it looked like there. You know, against the zone, if the Wolverines, they have to be sure of their passes. They cannot gamble with passes. You have to be sure that they can make smart passes and they can get the ball to where they're throwing it or else it's going to end up in a turnover as we get to a foul called. It looks like Julie Smith is going to be going to the line shooting two after a nice gap drive towards the rim. Caleb Augustin whistled for the fouls. We've got the replay here. In, a reach in foul called on Bogason. There you see it. Jay will have a second to come. Doesn't waste any time at the foul line. She makes both of those. And Utah Valley trails 38 34. Bergen into the front court quickly. Off to Smart. The Sioux swinging around the horn. Now down to Corey Loft. Newbold with a hand in her face. Loft bangs into her. Puts up a fadeaway shot. Won't go. And Mansfield pulls down the rebound for Utah Valley. Akiyama was trying to decide if she was going to run the fast break, decided to slow down. Trying to pass it off, it's tipped and stolen. Jossie Bergen has it for North Dakota. Bergen ahead to box and quick. Oh, they say a two-pointer up, won't go. Youngblood flies in for the rebound. Call up blocking fouls. Going to go on Julie Smith, I believe. And it will. So Julie called for a tough oh, foul call on her. We'll see. Uh, Youngblood coming in here at the very end. I think that was a good call. Julie was there. Youngblood had no place to land. She was forced to come down on Julie. We did get some disgruntled fans, but I think that was a, a good call there and a blocking foul. Bergen, good shake and bake move to the rack. Layup off the mark, though. And Mansell pulls down the board. Big miss there for Bergen. Nakayama swings it to Johnson. Looking for Newbold in the post. She's double teamed there. By Mansfield on the far baseline. Swing it to Johnson now. To Nakayama. Thinks about the three pointer. Doesn't take it. Shot clock down to seven. Pass stolen in the lane by Corey Law. So North Dakota takes advantage of a Wolverine turnover, and here they come. You know, two straight turnovers for Asumi there. Just after I said, you have to be sure of where you're passing the ball on the two previous plays. She was not sure where she was going to pass that ball, and she forced herself into a situation where she had to make a bad pass. Three-pointer forced up by Vargas and off the mark, and Mansfield has another rebound. Very good rebounder is Casey Mansfield. Off to Smith, three-pointer up. Looks good, it is good. Big shot by Smith. Utah Valley trails only by one here in the second half. 38-37, 15-40 to go. Foul called away from the basketball on Casey Mansfield. And we've got a media timeout here, but Utah Valley looking very strong in the second half. They've come all the way back to trail only by one. We'll send it to break with 15.41 to play. It's North Dakota 38, Utah Valley 37. You're listening to the Pepsi Great West Conference Women's Basketball Championship here on UVU TV.
Welcome back here to the UVU Event Center, Utah Valley hosting the inaugural Pepsi Great West Conference Basketball Tournament in Orem, Utah. And the Wolverines trail by one point. 38-37, 15 minutes, 41 seconds to play. It's North Dakota basketball as we come out of the timeout. Bogus in the inbound, she throws it into Bergen and here we go. Bergen to Nicole Smart, Smith has a hand in her face behind the arc. Swing it to Youngblood. Youngblood had a hot hand early, but hasn't done much lately. They give it back to Youngblood. Looking for the shot. Doesn't have it. Bergen will cut. Drive. Dish it out to Youngblood. Baseline jumper. Short. Rebound ricochets to Sydney Mason. The freshman is just checked in. And Mason runs away with it. Mason to Reynolds. Back to Sydney, And they'll slow it down. Mason, a freshman from American Ford. Former high school teammate with current teammate Casey Mansfield. They're both on the floor right now. Far corner Smith, three-pointer strong. And Reynolds gets the rebound. Back to Smith. Up. Block. No call and the rebound to North Dakota. Youngblood got a piece of that and she has the basketball right now. To Smart, picks it out the three, won't take it. Bergen back to Smart. Mansell closes out on her. Shot clock down to 11. Deep two up by Bogason and she hits it. Big shot by yeah. Kayla Bogason. To quiet down the crowd, North Dakota up three. You know, if you're defending, if you're defending her, you have to be aware that it, what we've seen so far, she's going to shoot it from anywhere at any time. She's got a very quick shot, so Wolverine defenders have to be aware of that. Mason couldn't handle the pass, has to jump in and tie up Bergen. Possession arrow stays with the Wolverines, though, so they'll have it. Whitney Ledger's going to come on the floor with four fouls with 14:21 to play. As she replaces Bogason. So Ledger's going to have to be very careful out there. I'm sure Utah Valley's going to try to take it to her. In the corner, three-pointer by Johnson off the mark. Tough, quick shot there, but it's knocked out by the Fighting Sioux. The Wolverines keep possession. Wolverines, sorry to interrupt you there, James. Wolverines still kind of hovering around the same shooting percentage. It was much better than when they were shooting 19%. Now they're 14 of 46. However, 4 of 21 from the three-point line. Nakayama quickly back in as she comes in for Mason. Saw her on the bench during the timeout with an ice pack over her eye. Looks to have maybe a shiner over that right eye. Does Asumi. Definitely a very tough individual back in the game quickly. Johnson with it. To Mansfield. The Wolverines looking for the shot. Driving the lane. Nakayama dish to the corner. Three-pointer by Smith. Good. Smith hits it. And that ties the game at 40 with 13.47 to go. Three-pointer back the other way, too short, but Ledger skies up for the board for North Dakota. They're going to call a foul on the Wolverines, Blake Reynolds. Tough uh, tough rebound there for, uh, for Ledger, but an even tougher assignment blocking out for Blake Reynolds. The thing that you have to be aware, that was a deep shot there. Deep shot equals those long rebounds. Long shots, long rebounds. Tough job of, uh, of Blake rebounding there. That's why everyone has to help her. Everyone has to crash the glass. Smart will put up a three-pointer well off the mark, and Mansfield gets a big rebound for Utah Valley. Nakayama down the court to Smith. Smith stopped defensively. She'll hesitate, drive, push it up, won't go, and they call a traveling violation on Julie. So a little couple too many steps there by Smith, and the Sioux will have it back. Good defense there from North Dakota, and especially from Ledger. It's a good thing she didn't foul her. She would have been out of the game, but really good defense from her forcing a travel there from Julie. Ledger's in there in the championship game, rolling the dice with four fouls. They get her down on the low block, puts it up and in, count it. She's fouled. That's why she's in the game, Matt. She can do that as North Dakota takes back the lead. You know, one of the very few post baskets that we've seen in this game from either team is Ledger now has six total points, made all three of her shots as she'll go to the free throw line here. But she does have a post up game, and I'm surprised that, uh, that North Dakota has not tried to get the ball into her a little bit earlier on in their offense. They have shot a lot of jump shots, whereas, whereas they could have gotten the ball inside, I think, to her and had maybe a little bit more success. 70% free throw shooter Ledger off the mark, and here's knocking out with the basketball. Wolverines down to 12.57 to go in the ball game. Championship game here in Orem. Prousey to Smith. Smith trying to work on Youngwood. Back to knocking out. Shot clock down to five. 
to Prousey. She'll put up the three ball, won't go, and the board pulled down by Law for North Dakota. Quickly ahead to Youngla, had the shot, didn't take it. The pass ricochets to Utah Valley. Prousey has it ahead. Quickly ahead to Mansfield, layup up and in. Oh my, fancy move by Mansfield. Both North Dakota players went right past her and Mansfield put the layup in. Once again, points off turnovers. If you can get a turnover in fast break, you run. And that's exactly what the Wolverines did. Great move there for Mansfield. Tied game one more time, but not anymore as Bogason shows why she's the Great West Conference Player of the Year. She quiets the crowd. North Dakota 44, Utah Valley 42, 12 minutes to go. I would look for Bogason to be more assertive here at the end of this game. Exactly as you said, she's a great player. Only three of eight on the game so far. But look for her to look for her shot more as we get to near the end here. Great pass by Nakiana. Nudo misses the layup. Nudo gets it back. Tries to back it back to Mansell, but it's going to be a backcourt violation as Casey Mansell wasn't expecting that pass. So a turnover, it'll be North Dakota basketball when we get back a very exciting game. Stick with us here, we'll send it to commercial break. North Dakota 44, Utah Valley 42 with 11.43 to play here in the championship game of the Great West Conference Tournament here in Orem, Utah. As a healthcare leader, I rely on Utah Valley University graduates to help our company provide quality healthcare for the region. Many of the nurses graduating from UVU go on to work in our hospitals and clinics. They are superbly trained and are excellent employees who tend to stay in the area and remain employed with us for years. This is just one example of how UVU is serving the economic development needs of the region and the state. Stop by the campus to see for yourself. Utah Valley University, it's your university. You wouldn't work on a construction site without your safety gear. Why would you drive your car without your seatbelt? Click It or Ticket supports the Zero Fatalities campaign, a goal we can all live with. Well, welcome back here. Championship game for the Great West Conference Women's Basketball Tournament. Utah Valley, the sixth seed, is trailing by two. I believe the score's, the score's wrong on the TV, but they're trailing 44-42 right now with 11.43 to go. Right in this ball game. The crowd's into it, and here we go. North Dakota's basketball. Jossie Bergen with it. Bergen off to Bogason. She'll swing it to Loft. Left wide open. She'll take it. Rattles around the rim out, and Prousey has it for Utah Valley. She'll wait and hand it to Nakayama, and here come the Wolverines. Nakayama to Mansfield, top of the free throw line, back to Nakayama. No look past the man, so she starts to drive the travels first. So turnover, North Dakota has it. You know, I was thinking to myself during that last uh, timeout, if I were both coaches, what would I be telling my team? I think if you're both coaches, you tell your team, no turnovers. No turnovers, because that's what's just going to kill your momentum in the last uh, 11 minutes that we have here. Pass tipped away by Nakayama. She races over right in front of our broadcast location, pokes it back. I believe Bogason has it. Down court to Ledger. Layup scored. Oh, my. Bogason very well aware of the situation. Saw Ledger, and Ledger had an open lane to the basket for the bucket. Great hustle from both teams. I mean, players diving all over the floor. Not much else you can ask there from a coach. Ball just seemed to bounce the way of the suit. Open at the elbow. Mansfield misses the jumper. New goal offensive rebound. Misses the putback. Nakayama will try one. Eight-footer scored by Asumi. Big shot for her. That gives her seven points as well as six assists. Utah Valley down two. Pass poked away by Nakayama, and she steals it. Off to the races. Fast break puts it up. No good. Mansfield's there for the board, but they call it jump ball first. You couldn't even hear the whistle as the crowd is so loud here at the UVU Event Center in this championship game. But Nakayama missed that layup attempt as she had two defenders closing in on her. In on her. They put the replay up. Asumi going hard to the basket here as we see both players come in there at the end. 
Tough call there. A tough call. I think it could have gone either way there. Uh, both players had a hand, hands on the ball at the, at, at the same time. Referee made a judgment call there. The Sioux end up with the ball going their way. Nicole Smart to Ledger, or I beg your pardon. Bogason with the basketball now. There's Ledger with the basketball. Ledger will swing it to Loft. To Smart, to Bergen. Two on the shot clock. She'll have to fire. She'll put it up. Just gets it off, won't go. And Prousey comes in for the rebound. Prousey races it into the front court. Nicole Smart right with her defensively. Prousey back to the senior. Smith now to Nakayama. The Wolverines will set the offense. Charlie by two with nine and a half minutes to play in the ball game. Championship game here. The inaugural Great West Conference basketball tournament. A shot off the mark. Tapped out to Utah Valley. Three pointer up. Won't go as well by Mansfield. Let's see who has it. It's North Dakota is fighting for it. It's going to be out of bounds off of North Dakota, Utah Valley basket. Let me tell you what I think has been the most amazing stat so far in this game. And, and it, I don't know how they ruled that last uh, play right there, but the Wolverines previous to that had 20 offensive rebounds. If I'm Coach Nixon, I'm telling my players, go to the glass every single possession because you can get rebounds. Foul call as Newbolt's going to the hole. Oh, they give it to Bogason. I was worried they might give it to Ledger as she was right there playing with four fouls. But Bogason picks up the foul and it's going to send Newbolt to the line. Here's the replay of that. It was Bogason that reached in with the foul there. That's the correct call. Newbolt shooting two. But James, think of that. I mean, the last stats that we have, the Wolverines, I, I believe now they do have. 21 offensive rebounds as opposed to 13 defensive rebounds. I mean, you never hear that. You, that's unheard of. A team with seven more offensive rebounds at this stage in the game than they have defensive rebounds. And that's great offense against the zone. So the Wolverines keep crashing those offensive, uh, keep crashing the offensive glass, but you have to remember that you have to also get back in transition defense. You can't have everybody crash the glass. You need to have your guards get back to prevent easy fast break baskets. Second free throw missed by Newbold. She can't convert either. And here comes North Dakota. Augustine had to be substituted for her. She had a little blood on her knee. So Youngblood's back in for her for the Fighting Sioux. Smart to Bergen. Bergen picked up by Nakayama. Open Youngblood three-pointer. She hits it. Big shot by Youngblood. She's trying to pump her team up. As North Dakota leads 49-44, up five with 8.42 to play. A nice play run there by uh, North Dakota, getting what looked like a double screen for Youngblood to be coming off of that screen. Just steps right into it. Nice three-point basket. So Julie Smith, the game starting to get physical in the crowd, yelling out for the officials to co control the game. Krause, top of the key, show barrier, shoulder drive, put the scoop layup up off the mark, and Ledger pulls down the rebound for the suit. Ahead to Bergen, and here they come. A one on three. Bergen's going to go to the rack, put it up, and miss the layup. Bergen had a good look there, just couldn't convert. So Utah Valley with the basketball, trying to score those, take advantage of the missed layup. Nakayama with it. 2 3 zone being played by North Dakota. Nakayama drives, dishes it to Smith in the corner. Smith picked up by Loft defensively there. Smith shakes her, goes baseline, double team. Got to call a blocking foul. Ledger's worried as she's looking at the official, seeing if it's on her. Oh, it is. Here's the replay right here. They call Ledger on the block as Smith rammed into her. That's going to be five fouls on Whitney Ledger. Could be a huge turning point in the game as she's going to have to exit stage left with the five personal fouls. We've got a media timeout, so we'll step aside and take it. Seven minutes, 48 seconds to play here in Orem. It's North Dakota 49, Utah Valley 44. We'll be back with the remainder of the Great West Conference Championship game here on UVU TV in just a moment. John is a real UVU professor, not an actor. So to tell his story, we hired a UVU student. Knowledge-based edification increases executive functioning in the frontal lobes. Yo, dude, UVU is more than an education. It's a life experience. Exposure to enhanced pedagogical approaches promotes neural activity in the limbic system. For sick education, get here and strap in. UVU facilitates the discovery of your personal Weltanschauung. 
What? Dude, you don't know everything yet. Utah Valley University. It's your university. Velton Shulong! Well, welcome back here to the UVU Event Center. The Utah Valley, Utah Valley University hosting the inaugural Pepsi Great West Conference Basketball Championship Tournament. It's the Wolverines that the six seed snuck into the title game as they down the three seed Chicago State Cougars in the first round matchup in the semifinal yesterday, beat the two seed Texas Pan American Bronx, and here in the title game, the Wolverines are trying to beat to topple the one seed, North Dakota Fighting Sioux. Right now, the Wolverines trail by five as we have seven minutes, 48 seconds to play. Julie Smith headed to the line to shoot two. You know, right as we started the second half, I asked you what you thought changed it for the Wolverines yesterday, and I think you nailed it right on the head. You said Julie Smith came out and played very well. Julie, in this game, two points in the first half. Right now, she has 12 points. If she makes this free throw, that'll give her, as she does, 13 points. You know, she's had a great start to this second half. But another thing, James, 57 shots for the Wolverines as opposed to 39 for North Dakota. Wolverines are getting a lot of shots. It's just they've had a hard time converting on the shots that they do take. North Dakota with the ball. Smart swings it to Bogason. 7.30 to play. Into the corner. Wide open. Three-pointer by Bergen. Over the rim. No good. But the offensive rebound pulled down by the suit. Bergen will penetrate the lane, dish it to the corner, three-pointer up by Youngblood, rattles around, won't go, and the board pulled down by Mansfield for the Wolverines. Nakayama, the senior point guard, who's had a big Great West Conference tournament, calls out the play, hand to fellow senior Smith, now they swing it around the horn, Jenna Johnson, she'll drive, kick it to Nakayama, back to Johnson, open baseline, look, rattles around, won't go, rebound, pop for it, they're gonna call a foul, let's see who they get. Julie Smith called for the foul, and she came barreling in there, tipping at the basketball, so Julie whistled for the loose ball foul. You know, in these situations where Wolverines are down three points, about seven minutes left to go in the game, we'll get a replay here as both uh, Julie Smith and Erica Newbold going in hard for the rebound, definitely a foul there. But the point I was going to make is these situations when your offensive game is not, is not going as you want it to, you have to win the game on the defensive end. So let's pay attention to how well the Wolverines play on the defensive end, which is where they're going to win this one. Down the block, out to Youngblood, three-pointer, nothing but net. As Youngblood starts to shoot that hot hand she had early in the game, she has 17 points to lead all scores. It's very hard when you get dribble penetration. You have to have teammates come and help you to try and stop that penetration and North Dakota has done a great job of, uh, of kicking out to open shots as Youngblood has been very successful on those three-point shots off of kickouts. Nakayama will take the three ball this time for Utah Valley and she sinks it. Big shot for Nakayama. That gives her double figures in the scoring column. Ten points. Wolverines down 52-49, trailing by three. Open, smart in the corner, doesn't take it. Smith right there with her. The Sioux swinging around to Youngblood, back to Smart. Open look by Bogus and puts up the quick three, won't go. And here's Nakayama for the Wolverines. Nakayama will slow it down. Julie Smith, who picked up the foul for the Wolverines about a minute ago, that was her fourth personal. She has the basketball now, has to be careful. She'll take the three-pointer and won't go from the top of the key. And Bergen gets the rebound for the Sioux. Timeout called by North Dakota coach Gene Roebuck. He wants to talk to his troops as this is the biggest stage here of the season. The Great West Conference Championship game on the line. North Dakota leads by three. Matt, give me your thoughts right now as this action's really picked up here in the second half. Great game. I mean, unbelievable environment. Nothing more you can ask for if you're the Great West in this inaugural tournament. Crowd is here as excited. You can feel the energy for both teams as we have fans from both teams here. Three-point lead for the Fighting Sioux. They've done a great job shooting 47% basically from the field in this game. Coming down the stretch here, turnovers are going to play a big factor. Free throws could as both teams are, uh, you know, North, uh, North Dakota is one uh, foul away from being in the, in the uh, bonus, the one and one Wolverines are two fouls away. So, as always in these close games, James, it, it comes down to taking care of the basketball. Free throws are going to be important, but both teams know that 
this is where it comes down to the defensive end. It's defensive stops win you games. Kick to Bergen. She backs up to the three-pointer, and they're going to call a foul. That will result in three free throws as Nakayama came out and took out Bergen's legs there. So a big foul call, three free throws for Bergen. In the season series between these two clubs, North Dakota beat Utah Valley both times. Utah Valley has never defeated North Dakota in the all-time matchup. Those, those two meetings on the season were the first two all-time meetings. First two free throws good by Jossie Bergen. She has nine points, looking to connect with all three of them and take advantage of the big foul on knocking out. She gets the friendly roll on the front end of the rim with that one, and she does make all three. I just hear Coach Nixon say that was huge, as that really was a big foul call as she converted all three free throws. Sue up 55-49. Exactly, a, a mental mistake, th a mistake there from Asumi. That's the last thing you want to do in that situation is foul a three-point shooter. Putting the Wolverines down now six. Uh, who's going to be that player for the Wolverines who says, I'm going to be the one to, to get points for my team when needed most? They try to find Julie Smith back to Mansell. She'll put up the shot. Off the rim, won't go. Rebound pulled down by North Dakota as Mallory Youngblood comes away with the pack with it. Hands it back to Bergen, the point guard for the Sioux. They swing it to Elise C.A. that just checked back in. C.A. to Bogason. Good look, won't go from the baseline, and Smith gets the rebound. Couple players hit the deck away from the ball. Young Glutton, Mansfield, no call. Knocking on has it. Into the corner to Johnson. 20 on the shot clock, 4.28 to play in the ballgame. Wolverines down six. Smith, three pointer up. Off the rim, no good. Ricochet to Mansfield. She scores the deuce as she puts the put back up and in. Utah Valley down four with 4.15 to play. Augustin, quick pass out front to Youngblood. Now to CA. Kick it to the corner to Law. Thinks about the three pointer, doesn't take it. She'll hand it to Youngblood. She'll take it. Won't go. Quick hand off to Nakayama, and here come the Wolverines. You can feel the crowd definitely behind Utah Valley here playing on their home floor. As the six seeded Wolverines trying to topple the top seeded North Dakota Fighting Sioux here in the title game. Three er, free throw line jumper off the mark by Smith. Augustin has the board. They got to call something. That's a travel or a foul. It looked like a trip as Mansfield tied up with Bogus, and they don't call. I can't believe that, man. No call, and they play on. Looked like she nearly rolled over there. So they say play on. Away from the ball. We've got a call here. Let's see what it is. A foul called. I, if that's on if Julie, that's which on I believe, <laughs> I, I think she's gone. I think they're giving it to Julie Smith, and that's going to be her fifth personal. That is five, so Julie fouls out with 15 points. One rebound, one assist. Not the best shooting night as you look at the stats. Four of 20 from the field, but a perfect four of four from the free throw line as Julie was scoring the ball here in the second half. She had two at halftime. Finishes with 15 as she fouls out. Kyra Prousey is going to check in and replace her. Because we've got a timeout called, or is it a, it's a media timeout. A media timeout, so we'll step aside, take a break. 3.26 to go. North Dakota leads by four, 55-51. We'll be back in a minute here on UVU TV. We meet here once a week. It's a chance to discuss mostly. I've always been like super concerned about saving money, right? Mm -hmm. But like I really wanted like a good education too. I guess I really got green fever when like I found out how Utah Valley mm -hmm. University can get me both. We have our regulars and of course there are always our new ones every time. I'm Steve. Hi, Hi Steve. Steve. This is my first week here. Uh, uh, I'm really excited. Uh, this whole green fever thing's kind of just started for me. So. More and more people want to know about green fever.
Well, welcome back. 3.26 to play in the title game of the inaugural Pepsi Great West Conference Basketball Tournament, or women's basketball. Utah Valley trailing on their home floor to the number one seed, North Dakota Fighting Sioux by four, 55-51. The best player for the Wolverines has just fouled out. Right before the break, Julie McMurray-Smith picked up her fifth personal, and it's going to be free throws, one and one situation here for Elise C.A., for North Dakota off the bench. She was the sixth man winner of, won the sixth man award here in the Great West Conference. And she makes a big first end of a one on one situation and a second to come. With Julie going out, it presents a, a couple of problems. I, I think that obviously the scoring, Julie has been the leading scorer for the Wolverines this year and probably the number one offensive option. So who's going to take that place here in the last three and a half minutes? Yeah, Wolverines are going to need uh, rebounders in the game as well. But uh, let's see, they did play, speaking of the Wolverines, they did play pretty good basketball when Julie was on the bench in the first half getting some rest. Let's see if they can continue that here. Down six right now, 3-10 to play. Johnson with it, shot clock to 12. To Nakayama, Utah Valley trying to work the ball inside. Nakayama with second side, three-pointer, drain a deep two from the top of the key, big shot. So maybe it's Nakayama that's going to try to take control here. She had a career high against Chicago State in the first round. But that was close to a carrying violation on Bergen, no call. Nakayama had a career high 26 points as the Wolverines advanced in the first round against Chicago State. Pass down low to CA save to Loft now in the corner to Bogason. Shot clock to 10 for the suit. Trying to look down low. She gets Loft on the baseline. Off around the screen, comes to the center of the court, puts it up, won't go. And there's Newbold for the big rebound. Newell ahead to knock down, and here come the Wolverines. To Mansfield, thinks about the three-pointer from the baseline, doesn't take it. 2.22 to play, Utah Valley down four here in the championship game. Into the corner, Johnson, big shot, she sinks the three-pointer. So the one possession was knocked down, and this possession is Johnson, both stepping up, both have 12 point, points in the game. Wolverines only fell by one, and a timeout called by Coach Roebuck for North Dakota. As you can hear the fans erupting here at the UVU Event Center. I got chills. This is a great game. It's fun to see players step up and make plays when it's most needed by their teams, especially in clutch situations as we've, we've never had a tournament like this here before on the campus. Players making plays, as you said, Asumi making the jump shot, Asumi making the pass for seventh assist as she dishes it off to, to, to Johnson, Jenna Johnson, for that three-point bucket. So. You know, we're in for an exciting last two minutes and eight seconds here, a one-point game. I, I, I still I still maintain it's going to be this defensive end for the Wolverines. They've got to make some stops. They've got to make some plays. I think they can get just about any shot that they want on offense. And uh, it's going to be an exciting finish here, James. I, I believe we're in for a, a great last two minutes here. It definitely will. 2.08 to play. The Wolverines come back out on the floor. On the floor for Utah Valley, Nakayama, Johnson, Prousey, Mansfield, and Newbold. For the Sioux, they bring out Bergen, C.A., Youngblood, Loft, and Bogason. North Dakota basketball, they are up by a point with just over two minutes left. Ooh, pass saved by C.A. in the corner to Youngblood. Youngblood not afraid to shoot the basketball. They get it to Bergen. She'll step back in deep three. Off the rim, no good. And Mansfield gets the up high for the rebound. Wolverines have a chance to take the lead here with under two minutes left in the ballgame. Into the corner, Johnson, three-pointer in rhythm, nothing but net. Johnson back-to-back -back trifectas. Utah Valley leads 59-57, 1.35 to play. On the baseline, Loft. North Dakota, oh, close to a traveling violation by Loft there. Trying to get it out front. Wild pass. Let's see who gets it. Nakayama has it in a foul by Jossie Bergen. As the crowd just loves what they're seeing here from the Wolverines. Utah Valley leads by two. A minute 23 to play. And it's going to be free throws, I believe, here for Asumi Nakayama. There it is. That, that defensive end making plays, making steals, forcing turnovers when the game is on the line. Great job for the Wolverines. Two clutch threes from Jenna Johnson from opposite corners. No fear stepping into that. She got the ball in perfect rhythm. Both nothing but net shots. Incredible uh, giving her uh, 15 points. And, and Asumi going to be going to the free throw line here for a one and one on the season. A great free throw shooter. So 
What a, what, a great, uh, what a great game we've got going here, James. Johnson definitely a shooter. We've seen her do that all season long in the game, though she was 0 of 5 from behind the arc before she's made these back-to-back three-pointers. So she wasn't shy to put them up, and she connected as Utah Valley leads by two. Timeout was called by North Dakota one more time here moments ago. We'll see what happens as we're heading down to the final minute plus here of the ball game. The title game here in the women's tournament of the Great West Conference Basketball Championships played here at Utah Valley University. We cannot count out North Dakota here. A minute 23, plenty of time left. If, if Asumi makes these free throws, they'll be down four. If she misses the first one, obviously they'll only be down two. The players that I would look for for a play to be drawn up for would be Youngblood in this situation or Bogason, the player of the year for the Sioux. I don't think you need a three. They're not going to need a three. They're just going to need the best shot that they can get. But a couple of times earlier on this game, North Dakota has come out of timeouts and run plays for those two players. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a play run for one of those two. It's a big situation for Nakayama, one and one. She sinks the first. She'll have a second. Nakayama is a 78.2% free throw shooter on the year, her senior campaign. Trying to make both and make it a two possession game. Free throw up and it's good. So she does just that. 61-57. Wolverines with the lead. 120 to play. Jossie Bergen quickly into the front court for the suit. Hands it to Youngblood to Bogason. Bogason to CA. Hand in her face by Prouse. She gets past her, puts up a tough shot with Newell there defensively. We've got a jump ball called down low as CA hits the deck. Her and Nakayama tie it up. It's going to be Wolverine basketball as they control the possession area. So a big defensive stop one more time, Matt, and that's what you've been talking about here in the second half. Yeah, because that's what wins you these games. That's what, what's, what has to win you these games. Obviously, you need offense, but if you can keep the other team from scoring, it takes that pressure off of your offense. And the Wolverines have done just that up, up four points. A minute nine seconds left here. I wouldn't be surprised to see North Dakota go into some sort of a press. You know, maybe just to get some pressure, maybe to get get the Wolverines kind of flustered, try and get them to force force a turnover. If I'm Coach Nixon, I'm sitting there telling my my girls, I'm saying, take care of the basketball, no silly passes. You just have to be sure of where you're throwing the ball and have to be aware that North Dakota is going to be swiping, they're going to be slapping, they're going to be doing everything that they can to get a turnover and get a steal. I don't think they're going to foul. I don't think they need to foul, but they're going to be looking to put a lot of pressure on the ball handlers of the Wolverines. So you get the ball into Asumi's hand, she's great at ball handling. Just don't make a silly move, a silly pass, a silly play, and the Wolverines will be in great great position here. And I'm sure that's exactly what Coach Nixon was talking about. It's take care of the basketball right here. It's gonna be Johnson set to inbound. North Dakota puts on the full court press, gets it into Mansfield. Trying to reach in on her, CA, Mansfield, no call there, looking for someone to pass to, and she hands it to Johnson, but they call a foul on the ground. CA fouls her, she's laying on the floor. So it's gonna put Casey Mansfield at the line, the freshman for Utah Valley. See, I'm surprised there that North Dakota fouled, just because you're giving, uh, you're stopping the clock, which is what you would want, but you're putting the, the Wolverines on the, on the free throw line with the chance to add to the lead that they have. Uh, if it were me, I would have played maybe a defense there, 30 seconds, but you know what? That's why I'm just an announcer, not a coach. That's what they decided to do in that situation. Mansfield, a huge one-on-one -on -one free throw as she converts it. 72.4% free throw shooter, Casey Mansfield, already has 10 rebounds in the game. If she makes this, it'll give her another double-double. Oh, off the mark. Nine points, 10 rebounds. Rebound. Off the mark, that bounds off of North Dakota as Prousey is so excited as Utah Valley will keep possession and inbound on their own end of the court baseline. Key here, got to be aware of how many timeouts you have. Uh, North Dakota is going to do everything that they can to deny the basketball being passed in. Got to be aware of how many timeouts you have, and if you need to call one, you can. You want to avoid the corners, just get the ball in. Johnson throws it up high, top of the key, and it's stolen by Bogason as she skies up for it. Not what Utah Valley wanted to do. And then I'm not quite sure why Asumi's fouling her there either. Yeah, that's a compound of a mistake right there. I like the idea of the ball pressure, of putting pressure and stopping the basketball, but you don't want to foul because this is exactly what North Dakota needs, the, the, the clock stop going to the free throw line. 
And once again, just those turnovers, you, you cannot do that. Can't turn the basketball over on an inbound play like that. One and one for Bogason. Oh, off the mark, and Prousey skies high for the rebound. She's quickly fouled. As Utah Valley leads by five, so the foul doesn't hurt the Wolverines. It's knocking out a foul Bogason moments ago. Bogason off the mark on the front end of the one and one. So now to the Utah Valley's turn. Kyra Prousey headed to the line. The freshman from Arlington, Washington. She's a 75% free throw shooter. Doesn't have too many throws in the season. Though. I think she's three of four, and she misses the first. North Dakota with the ball, 50 seconds to play, down five. To Youngblood, to Bergen, deep three-pointer up. Too strong, Prousey up, tip off of her fingertips, out of bounds, they say. The crowd doesn't like that call, but they give the ball to North Dakota. That's a good call. I, we had a great angle to that. That was a great call. It was off of the Wolverine player. I'm surprised the Wolverines left uh, Bergen so wide open on that three. They can't give up a long three like that. 40 seconds to play now. Out to Youngblood. To Bogason. She'll force one up from the side. Won't go. And there's Mansfield. And she's quickly fouled. A 34.7 to play. Utah Valley trying to wrap this championship game up from the free throw line. As they're up by five. Going to be more free throws here for the Wolverines. The Wolverines have kind of made this game more difficult than it should be with their missed free throws. They've had uh, two misses on the front end of one and ones. They've got to get some free throws and pad that lead. They can't keep relying on uh, North Dakota to be missing those shots. It's a double bonus this time. And Mansfield doesn't need it. She drains the first. So she'll have a second to come. Ten team fouls on North Dakota. They'll need two free throws the rest of the way for the Wolverines. Mansfield, second one out of the and goes in off the backboard to Utah Valley up seven, 32 seconds to go. Here comes Bergen, she'll put up the shot. Looks good, won't go off the, off the rim. Bergen had it momentarily, and I believe they're going to give the foul to Nakayama, and they will. So it's going to put Bergen at the foul line. So Nakayama being a little aggressive there, puts Bergen at the free throw line with 27.7 to play. You know, there's so many things that a team needs to do in this situation. One thing that I have, I have yet to mention, but been, been needing to do so, is rebound. You have to have, you, know, you do not need anybody for the Wolverines going out in transition. You have to have every single Wolverine player in the paint for those rebounds. You have to rebound off of these shots, uh, and uh, Bergen comes up with the, the offensive rebound off her own missed shot there to prove that point. So Bergen hits both free throws, makes it a five-point Wolverine lead. Utah Valley gets it into Mansfield, and she's quickly fouled. 26.7 seconds to play. Foul on Nicole Smart of the Sioux. But another big situation for free throws here, Casey Mansfield. Mansfield doing a nice job stepping up here. She talked about with Julie Smith. Out with five personals. Mansfield has a double-double, trying to lead, or add to her 11 points she scored to give her 12 points. She has 12 points, 11 boards. So having a huge game is the freshman. Wolverines overall 13 of 17 from the free throw line, so they have done a good job, 77%. Only adding to that now. Both free throws made. It's a three-possession game. Here comes North Dakota. Ahead to Smart, three-pointer. Look around the room, won't throw. Mansfield gets the rebound again. Make that her 12th, 12th rebound, and she's going to be back at the line shooting more free throws. We said when Julie went out, who's going to be in there to rebound? We, I, I said, and I thought that was going to be a problem, but apparently not, as uh, Casey Mansfield, geez, doing an incredible job on the glass. 13 points, 12 rebounds, as you said. She has come in, taken that place uh, of who's going to be the rebounder for the Wolverines. She drains another free throw, does Mansfield. Extending the Wolverine lead all the way up to eight. Mansfield, 72.4% free throw shooter, converts again. Utah Valley up nine now with 17 seconds to play. Desperation time, North Dakota. Three-pointer block by Johnson, and that should just about do it, Matt, as the crowd here in Orem knows that as they are telling the Wolverines how much they appreciate their hard effort here today. Jenna Johnson got that huge block. She's headed to the line here, shooting two, trying to ice the ball game. Johnson sinks the free throw. Give the shooter 16 points. Kayla Birmingham will check in. 
as she replaces Asumi Nakayama, and the crowd loves it as they give a big cheer for the senior. Nakayama comes out for the final time, donning the Wolverine green, helping her team, it looks like, to the championship here in the inaugural Great West Championship. Free throw is made, so nice shooting by Johnson. Puts Utah Valley up 11. And Utah Valley calls a timeout, probably a substitution timeout to get their seniors out of the game with 13.7 to play. Matt, tell me what your thoughts here on this Utah Valley women's team in the championship game here today. Well, it's the beauty of a tournament. I mean, the, the Wolverines struggled all year long, as we said, three and nine in conference. The Fighting Sioux, 11 and one in conference. The Wolverines, the six seed. The Sioux, the, the one seed. I mean, that's the beauty of tournaments. Anybody can win. That's why we, everybody calls it March Madness, because it absolutely is. It's just madness because of the things that teams can do if they put together a, a string of good games. Deep three-pointer hit by Youngblood with 6.7 seconds to play. Wolverines up eight, and that's going to do it. Kayla Birmingham is going to dribble out the clock. Utah Valley is the champs as the players all run together, jumping up and down. The Wolverines are the inaugural Pepsi Great West Conference women's basketball champions. Coach Gene Roebuck being a class act, shaking hands here with the Utah Valley coaching staff. But what can you say about the Wolverines as a team effort? They came to play here today. Some of the crowd on the court with them celebrating the first Great West Conference basketball championship as the Wolverines definitely picked up the tempo here in the second half. Coach Nixon yelling to our team, let's celebrate as they're at midcourt. They win by the final score, 70 to 62. What a big win for Utah Valley. So I, Matt, I think you exactly said it. I mean, what excitement. I mean, coming into this, you, you would not have known that the Wolverines were gonna put together a string of games like this, but how incredible was their run and uh, you know the, the first uh, first inaugural championship as you said and the Wolverines come away with a victory uh, I think anybody who follows Wolverine basketball should be so extremely proud of the progress that these teams have uh, that any every sport team on the campus has made and uh, culminating in this great event for basketball for the women so just a huge huge victory here and a huge effort by the Wolverines in the tournament as Utah Valley is able to down the one seed, North Dakota Fighting Sioux. We're going to be joined here by head coach Kathy Nixon. Coach, thanks for joining us here today. You're welcome. Coach, talk about today in winning the inaugural uh, Great West Conference Basketball Championship. Your team being the sixth seed. What's what's happened to this team here? As you just come and just looked amazing in the tournament. Yeah, you know. I, I, I wouldn't ever underestimate these kids. You know, it's a little surreal right now, actually, to, to know that we came in as a sixth seed and we're able to pull it away. I'm just so happy for the kids. It's awesome. Glad for the seniors they can go out with the win and just really, really credit their commitment and they, they never gave up. We've been learning lessons along the way and it's great to see it put in action today. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us, Coach. I know you got to get back out for the trophy presentation here as the Wolverines are going to be awarded the championship trophy. Commissioner Ed Grom of the Great West Conference is out on the floor, as is Mike Jacobson, the athletic director here at Utah Valley University. As Nate Mathis, the PA announcer here at the UV Event Center, reads over the awards they're going to hand out. So we'll stay with you and bring you those as well. As Utah Valley University comes away going 3-0 here just doing the improbable, the sixth seed coming into the tournament, three and nine as Matt talked about in Great West Conference play and the Wolverines got hot at the right time, just as you said Matt, as Matt joins me back here, that's the great thing about a tournament, anything can happen and the Wolverines come away as the champions. Yeah, you know, very exciting, definitely. Uh, I think that the way you look at some of these stats, you would think the way that both teams shot the basketball, you would think that the, the fighting Sioux we're going to come away as the victor. Uh, definitely with the way that they played, they, they played very well. They had a great season. They had a great conference season, but the you know, Wolverines were the, the better team uh, in the tournament, and tonight they played great basketball. 
They're reading off the all-tournament team here. Bianca Torrey from Texas Pan American. Named to the all-tournament team, as was South Dakota's Amber Hagee. I believe both of those teams have gone home, though. From North Dakota, Mallory Youngblood named to the all-tournament team. She had a good game here again and a losing effort. Youngblood scores 20 points. She comes out and is recognized at midcourt by Commissioner Ed Grom. From Utah Valley University, Jenna Johnson. Jenna Johnson for the Wolverines receives a huge ovation as she's named to the all-tournament team. Johnson hit those two huge three-pointers to give Utah Valley the lead as she has scored 17 points. Casey Mansfield, a much-deserved surprise here to the all-conference, all-tournament team as Mansfield had another double-double on back-to-back days, 15 points, 12 boards. And the most valuable player of the tournament, Asumi And they give the MVP of the tournament to the point guard for the Wolverines, Asumi Nakayama. Nakayama brought her A game all tournament long, scored a career high in the first game, the win over Chicago State, and continued her dominance here all tournament long today in the Wolverine victory. She scored 14 points, dished out eight assists, and also collected five boards. So Nakayama out with getting a big hug from Athletic Director Mike Jacobson and here at Utah Valley University is recognized as the most valuable player here at the Great West Conference Women's Basketball Tournament. The Utah Valley University Wolverines. And now the whole Utah Valley University Wolverines are recognized as the conference champions as they've been read here. Got it, the all-conference team. Please step forward to receive your championship medallions. Trying to get the team to come out and receive their the trophy as the Wolverines come away with the, the big win. Coach Nixon gives a big hug to her departing Number senior, three, the MVP of the tournament, Asumi Nakayama. Julie Smith is being recognized here, a departing senior as well. That's meant so much to Utah Valley University. Julie fouled out in this game in the second half, but it's been so consistent all career long. They're gonna recognize them all individually. Number four, Sydney Mason, the freshman from American Fork, Utah, the backup point guard, had a strong season as well. Playing We Are the Champions here at the UVU Event Center. Chantel Martin recognized a member of the all or of the champion tournament team here, Asumi Nakayama, the MVP of the tournament. Gets another ovation. How many trophies can Asumi hold there? She's getting yeah. quite a collection. She's got she, too many. Man? She's gonna need somebody else to help her out there. Gee, she's taking home a lot of hardware today. Jenna Johnson recognized. As is Caitlin Vogel, Kyra Krause, who had a strong championship game here tonight. Krause did a nice job from the defensive end of the floor. Casey Mansfield, as we talked about, named to the all-conference, all-tournament team. is recognized Kayla Birmingham playing her final game as well. As she's graduating, only a junior, but is graduating and going to be moving on to pursue other options. Receives the award. Erica Newbold will be back next year, only a sophomore. Receives the award. There's the senior. Blake Reynolds recognized, gets a hug from Mike Jacobson. Tasha Sanborn, the final Wolverine player in, in uniform. And Bryn Bradley, who's been injured most of the season, comes out to receive one as well. But what a run for Utah Valley here, Matt, as they run the gauntlet in the tournament, the six seed. They down the three seed, the two seed, and the one seed to walk away. Here comes Coach Kathy Nixon in her 15th season at the helm of Utah Valley. Coached her team in a down year to the Great West Conference Championship. What, just what a job by Coach Nixon. You know, incredible job. I, a lot of the men games that we've done, Steve and I, Steve Watts, who does those games with me, we've talked a lot about in this situation, you know, you can forget about 
you can forget about your regular season. Once the tournament starts, you can forget about the regular season because it's almost a new season where you can focus and say, we can win three games, or we'll be champions. And the, the, tough, the tough schedule, the rough, the rough time that we had earlier on in the year as the Wolverines did go through that stretch is gone. It's gone because now you won your conference tournament. You beat every team in the league, and it's just such a great and wonderful feeling. I'm, I'm sure that they're, uh, they're enjoying this and loving every second of it. So the whole Utah Valley squad out there, they are the champions. The assistant coaches, the athletic trainer, everyone being recognized here on their home floor. The six-seeded Wolverines were able to somehow, someway, come away with the conference championship here in the inaugural season. They present Coach Nixon with the game ball, much deserved. Now they're going to recognize the captains as they give away the championship plaque trophy here as Blake Reynolds, Julie Smith, and Asumi Nakayama all come and hold it up in glory as Utah Valley wins the inaugural Pepsi Great West Conference Championship here today. What a story, what a storyline. As, as we talked about all game long, seven and 22, three and nine in conference play coming into this tournament, but they're playing on their home floor. So just as you said, Matt, everybody has a chance. It's a new season starting over. Utah Valley definitely surprised some folks in this Great West Conference tourney as they beat the one, two, and three seeds and are crowned the champions here today. One final thought. You see this picture here? That's why you play sports. You know, that's why you compete. That's why you practice. That's why you do everything that you can. Well, that moment right there is we see Blake holding up the trophy, but that's the reason you play. We're going to sign off here today. The men's championship game will be back at 7.30. South Dakota taking on Houston Baptist. But in the women's championship, it's Utah Valley surprising a lot of folks as they down North Dakota 70-62. to We thank all of you for joining us. For my broadcast partner, Matt Peterson, I am James Warnick. So long from the inaugural Pepsi Great West Conference Tournament here at Utah Valley University.